What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to remove objects within DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. There can be many reasons you need to remove an object later on in post. Maybe you're trying to push your editing skills to the limits. Maybe you forgot there was a lighting stand or the boom mic maybe was coming into frame and you need to get rid of it. Maybe there's a sign in the background that was way more distracting than you realized until you got in your computer and realized, crap, uh, that just is not gonna work. A while back I was shooting a music video and we had a guy playing a guitar on his truck bed next to a street light. Well, the problem was, is it was way too dark to actually just light it off of that. So what we needed to do is we needed to bring C stands in, lights, bounce light on it to make it look like that street light was actually producing as much light as possible. There was no way we were able to light this subject far enough away without making it look like we were actually lighting them. It's a very difficult challenge doing something like this and it may not be that difficult for you. Maybe it's just you need to get a boom pole out of it and you want a really wide shot instead of doing a punch in and there's no way you can mic that person the way you need to so that's what we're gonna dive into today let's load up DaVinci Resolve and we'll go from there the first thing we're gonna need is the video clip colored balanced whatever you're gonna do to it it's a little underexposed and that's mostly just because we weren't really shooting with a dual ISO camera and our lights were just not quite powerful enough to do what we needed them to which is why we needed to move them in so close uh, but it, it does work and it is usable hands down the easiest way to remove these things would be to shoot a clean plate and if you guys don't know what that is it's when your camera is set on a tripod and you let it roll you move whatever you want out of the frame and then you have a clean plate afterwards don't touch the camera at all now you can see if we shut it off and on we have a clean plate other than the truck is moving just a little bit that's because of the weight of him sitting on it and then him getting off but everything else is the same i don't really care so much about the truck i'm worried about the light stands the easiest thing to do would be hop into the color page make sure you're selected on the top video clip we're going to add a node by hitting option s and within here we're going to make sure we're on the power window we're going to grab our cursor we're going to zoom out just a little bit and we're going to start drawing I would soften and feather that just a little bit. Then we need to add an alpha out point. So we're gonna right click and we are gonna add alpha out point. We're gonna connect the blue dot to the blue right here. Boom, we've got it. But of course it's doing the opposite thing. So what we need to do is reverse it by clicking this right here. And we need to feather the crap out of that. That definitely doesn't look good. So what we need to do is tweak it by messing with this, maybe bringing these around. And with just a few tweaks, we can hop back into the edit page and you can see that looks drastically better. It's not perfect by any means, but it is usable. You could tweak that, fix things a little bit more. If we jump back into the color page, click on that node that's got that mask, hit Command D to show you before and after. It is a dramatic difference. Another thing to know is if you need to remove multiple objects and you cannot do this like I did where I went around it and kind of isolated all the things, maybe something is completely coming in frame and there's just no way you can do that. The best way to do that would be add another node just like normal. We're going to add our power window mask, draw around here. We're going to connect the alpha out point to the out point. We are going to invert it feather it just like normal. Now there is no way to draw a second power window on top of one that already has one. So the best way to do it is right click, go to add node, and we're gonna add a parallel node. And in here, we can add another window on top. We'll draw that real quick, doesn't need to be perfect. We can feather it just the same. Now you can see it's doing it, but it's not showing up and we don't know why. The best way to fix that is to uncheck this add alpha out points. So we're breaking that. We're gonna take the blue from the first mask and we're gonna connect it to the arrow of the second mask. Then we are gonna take the blue output and connect it here. Now you can see it's done what we need, but it's reversed it. So again, we're gonna go right here and we're gonna reverse it. Now we can feather this one individually 
Of course, they don't look perfect, but all I'm trying to show you is you can do two power windows on top of each other, but you have to go this method. You can't just add another serial node and connect it to it. It doesn't work that way. Let's say you forgot to shoot a clean plate and you're back in post and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that's when object removal will come in clutch. It is really there to help for when you cannot do a clean plate underneath. You're probably gonna have a better time, it'll be easier on your computer, and it will just look better overall doing the mask the way that I did the first way. But if you do not have that clean plate and you still need to remove an object, object removal will get you really close, if not just as good in that ballpark. So without the clean plate underneath, the best way to do that is to click on this, add another node, option S, we're gonna go into open effects, we're gonna grab object removal and we're gonna drop it right on top of there. Then we're gonna go to our power window on the same node and we are gonna draw what we need removed. I'm gonna stay relatively close to where I need because object removal is looking at the rest of the image to try to fill in what it thinks needs to be there. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna soften that just a little bit, not too crazy, maybe 50. I'm gonna go ahead and grab scene analysis, let it run, do its thing. It is gonna be a little extensive on your computer because it's working pretty hard. Once it's done, you'll see it took that out. I'm gonna build clean plate after that, hoping it looks okay. Jump back into the editor, check it out. It's not perfect, you can see it's still a little messy. So we could go back in color and we could kinda of try to tweak it and clean it up a little bit. Run scene analysis one more time, build a clean plate, go back into the editor, check what that looks like. A little better, it needs to be tweaked a little bit more, I'd probably soften it. Remember, every time you do a tweak, you're gonna need to do scene analysis and build a clean plate. So I would get the first one looking really good. That's looking okay, it needs a little bit more tweaking, but I can live with that. Now what we need to do is we need to remove these other ones. So we could draw another one, but we can't do that. So what we need to do is we need to add another node, add object removal, drop it on there, do another cursor, draw this around, scene analysis, let it build it, do its thing. Anytime you start doubling up effects on different nodes or adding something this big like object removal twice, it's really gonna start to put a strain on your computer. So like I was saying earlier, I would definitely have a clean plate. If you can, it's going to be way easier just to mask something out than to actually remove it and try to have your computer do it for you. After we've taken that out, we can build clean plate boom it'll take it out now there are some times where your computer will freak out and it just does not like doing two masks at the same time most of the time i figured out it's actually just running really slow so if you hop back into the editor and your second mask hasn't shown up that's normally why is your computer's running slow i actually thought there was a glitch inside there but there wasn't sometimes it will take a very 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 long time to show that so a workaround to that is you can actually delete the second mask. We're gonna right click on our first mask and we're gonna go down to add node and we're gonna add a parallel node. Then in here, we can add our object removal and our mask around this. I've kind of figured out adding a parallel node to bridge both of those separately. Sometimes works a little bit better on your computer. It works a little bit faster and it doesn't seem to have as many glitch problems. Now keep in mind, again, like I said, removing objects and using object removal is only as good as it's going to get it's not perfect it's not the best it can be uh, you're always going to be better shooting a clean plate always having a clean plate underneath it's way easier on your computer and you can do a lot more with it now tracking a mask is something completely different if that's something you guys would like to learn and dive more into let me know in the comments below if you want to learn how to remove something in the background when it's handheld that is something that we can definitely dive into, but this is just how to remove stuff two different ways. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Drop a comment below. Let me know. Do you want to see a tutorial on, you know, object removal moving? That was weird. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'm out. Peace. Just hanging out, waiting for that computer to get done. Process that. Process it. Process it. Process.
glasses. And I feel weird not having a beard. I need to trim it down for work with all this stuff going on. But it is what it is. It's done. <laughs>